Oh, hello people. So, as of the moment I am talking, I have been drawing about for a year and a half. And during that year and a half, I have been drawing more than in the 20 years that have been before that combined. So that's a big change that has happened in my life and usually big changes um, provoke other changes in your life. So I started thinking about it and I realized that there has been a lot of things <laughs> that have changed. Wow. So I'm talking about those today and uh, like most of them are really like exciting and good things that have happened that at least I am really happy that they are in my life now and I'm like waiting to see how they develop in the future as I'm drawing more and more and getting more experience and stuff so uh so the only negative thing and it's usually temporary and uh, is the not really wrist pain but the pain in my forearm because is that happens usually when I in top of drawing I write a lot so right now I have been writing a lot taking a lot of next lecture notes and writing my diary so it adds to, to the um, strain no no strain but the usage of the hand and I guess the muscles get tired and stuff so I guess I should be more careful I've been trying to <laughs> learn to write me to my left hand but it's really slow and really difficult and it's usually not a, an option when the lecturer is talking really fast and you just have to jot down all the notes you can the time you can so yeah some forearm pain but that's okay at least it's not unbearable it just it it's there like in the background but anyway so the positive changes uh have happened like in my life in general and uh then also my perception of the world around me the person perception of things and my attitude towards things and life i guess so i'm going to start about the changes in my life so the <laughs> maybe the most obvious one right now is the big cardboard box full of bones in the middle of my room in the middle of my room uh, <laughs> So I finally got the badger I've talked about some time back. It's still in pieces. I haven't been able to build it yet since uh, it's still kind of fatty. Like the bones have fat inside them and uh, I guess the fat can affect the bones and maybe wear it down when time goes on. Right, right now it's not a problem yet. But, like, wait 10 years and there might be some uh, difference, since fat is essentially an acid, I think. Or was it? Uh, I don't even remember, bad biologist. I think it was an acid and, uh, and it will just wear down the bone, if you leave it like that. And it's brown and somewhat ugly and smells. Okay, it doesn't bother me. The smell doesn't really bother me, but people, other people can be bothered by it. So I have to remove the fat, and the fat uh, is removed by putting it in small motor oil. No, no oil, but um, gas. Gasoline. You <laughs> put it for a week in a gasoline, and then the fat will come out. The other option is to put it in ammonia, but ammonia in Finland is not really easily available, like... I've understood, or at least it's not as cheap as gas, so I just have to go and buy gas and wait for winter to be over so that I can put it outside and wait that the <clears throat> fat comes out. So yeah, that's the batcher story. And it's really a beautiful skeleton and, and everything, so I'm, I'm happy I have it now. <laughs> I can't wait for summer to come. And then um, the other thing in my life 
that has changed is that I've started to wake up at five. Why is that? Is that um, I'm I've always been a morning person, just to start off with that, and also um, uh, yeah, so my most effective hours or the hours that I'm uh, that I can accomplish more, most stuff anyway is in the morning, like the three, four hours just after waking up. And so I, in the evening when I wanted to draw it, I never was able to because I was tired after the school day and everything. And I usually stayed at school really late. So after coming home, I just went straight to sleep or something and it never really turned out well, so I decided to start waking up at 5 and draw in the morning so that I don't have any excuses, I can't be tired since I've just woken up and everything, and I don't always use the hours to drawing, so I can sometimes even um, do schoolwork in the morning and I am so much more effective and I can get so much more accomplished in the morning and the <laughs> really fun feeling is that when you have woken up at five or really early and started working really early and then like the clock comes at 12 or something and you just realize that you've been working for six hours and it's 12 o'clock <laughs> so that's I don't know I, I like it it's funny and uh, then also another thing, I don't know if this is really about life or anything, but because of drawing I now have this knowledge, general knowledge about muscles and bones, bone structure, and <laughs> I, I think it's cool. It's in the best, best case scenario it can lead up to getting some work one day, who knows. Like animal conservation would be a really cool job. So, and stuff, and muscles are, and bones are interesting, so I really, I, I like learning about them, and whatever. And anyway, and the waking up at five thing leads also to, uh, leads to the attitude change side of the art has changed me thing. So my motivation has gone up. I have goals more goals like I I want to get good at drawing like my essentially my immediate goal is always to be better than I am now in one year always be better in one year than I am now so that's that's like the main goal I'm keeping in my head all the time but also I I'd, I'd like to get art related jobs or our stuff it it would be cool so that like leads up or builds up the motivation and being able to work in the morning and stuff um, feeds it itself like getting work done feeds the motivation because I am I, I realize I can I'm a, able to do it and yeah and so my work, work ethic also has gone up and for example, I haven't really played any video games for a long time, or if I do, I don't play often, or for really long stretches of time at a time. And I'm just generally doing much more stuff, because um, before I started drawing, I some, especially during the days I didn't have anything, anywhere to go, I could stay in bed until like 12, even though I woke up at whatever, like at 8 maybe. I woke up at 8, but I just grabbed my DS and started playing Pokemon for 4 hours. And I hated myself and I hated it. So... Yeah, so now that I am more focused, I wait, I just get up every morning, no excuses and everything, so... I am happier about that. I get stuff done. 
and the um, biggest thing that has changed, at least that I noticed all notice all the time in my everyday life, is like my perception of things. Like I see now, I look at things and I see them. Like don't know if it's more clearly or what. But I all the time I am thinking like how would I draw this? How would the how do the shadows work and what what other planes and how does this work and everything and everything becomes really interesting like even a dishwashing bottle or whatever that is. Uh, it's really interesting because you start looking at the shape and the, all the shadows and all the reflected lights and all that cool stuff. And you just want to draw it, and I, I I want to draw all the time now. And it's not possible since <laughs> I have li like other stuff to do in my life too. But ah, uh, it's it's cool. And when uh, back in the day I learned uh, for the first time about bounce life, uh, I just once I'm at the university I found a blue paper, and I just started. Putting it everywhere and seeing if the paper affects affects the surface it's close to or next to, and I just went everywhere with the blue paper, and everyone <laughs> was kind of wondering what I was doing. And also, since I am looking and staring at everything, I also have found myself awkwardly staring at people and staring at muscles and uh, things, and uh, <laughs> I just usually hope that people don't notice I stare at them all the time, because I just love to draw everyone. <clears throat> I sometimes even do, I'm just somewhere in the lounge, like kind of student lounge room uh, in the, at the university, and I just draw people, I don't care if they notice, well, it depends on the person. Sometimes I just continue, sometimes I change person. But quite often people actually don't notice even if there's like a few meters to the person because they are always talking with each other and don't really pay attention to whatever the silent people are doing <laughs> or the people that are not participating in the conversation. Uh, and uh, adding to the perception thing, like how you see the things you see around you is the kind of knowledge, maybe. Like, when you know what you're looking at, when you have studied something and you kind of know how it's built and stuff, you see it a lot better than before, than before you had. Like, it's essentially, it's. I, I could compare it that when you uh, give those uh, glasses to colorblind people that allow them to see colors, it's I, I I don't know how they feel like since I'm not colorblind, but I would compare it to that because like when the time I start take took the time to study noses, for example, or ears, I it I just studied that for one hour. It didn't really really didn't take long, and after that I never have looked at noses the same. Now I pretty much know how the shadows work and I noticed all the shadows and noses are amazing and beautiful and wow <laughs> I'd never seen noses before but now I som somehow do like and that was only one hour like imagine if I like and this I can't imagine if I studied like one week just noses like how different that would be And and that's because like no, knowledge changes your mental image from the symbol to like to the actual thing. So I I have this example here. So take something you have never drawn before, like whatever, uh, be it a train or uh, a horse or a face or a hand or whatever. And pause the video, draw it, don't cheat, don't look any reference or anything, just draw it. And, uh, well, <laughs> it, 
it probably didn't end, re end really well. Like, this is my try. Try to guess what it is, okay? <laughs> I, I guess you didn't guess. <clears throat> so, and... So it was a transformer anyway. Uh, and now if I took the time to actually do some studies and learned how transformers work and what they actually do look like and this would look a lot different because I have don't really have any problem drawing horses or I'm now starting to be able to draw humans too but I've never drawn transformers I don't really draw any industrial stuff anyway so it <laughs> was a struggle <laughs> I really laughed at the result and also I put the castle next to it that also was a kind of try to draw a castle and uh, it ended how it ended since I haven't really drawn buildings either. So studying and knowledge changes your perspective and changes your mental image of things. Uh, yeah. And now, like, all the time I take the time to study anything, I... My world opens and I realize that I have never seen that thing before in my life. And <laughs> it happens quite often now and it's really awesome, I love it. It's great and I would like to study everything all the time. But... <laughs> You can't do everything all the time. It's it's kind of sad and that's also a thing that applies to biology too, like the knowledge makes you see see thing, but it works kind of in, in a different way. So usually when you walk outside and you hear birds and you just think to yourself, okay, that's a bird, whatever, or sea bird, you just see it. It's, it's a bird. You might know some names of the species and stuff, but probably not a lot and uh, when I started learning birds for the first time I actually started looking around myself around me outside um, and seeing that birds are actually there everywhere and there's a lot of species going around and I never really noticed that and uh, yeah <laughs> So I really started looking a lot and I'm not really a plant person but that the, the same thing would happen with plants like usually when you walk outside and you just walk in a grass field or whatever you should just think okay it's grass whatever but if you knew what to look for or just took some time and look actually at the grass under your feet you would probably notice that there is often much more than one, only one species. Like in, in one field there can be easily like 15 species of different plants and only three of them would actually qualify as grass. As grass. <laughs> or, or another example is bugs. Like everything with wings you usually just think that, okay, it's a fly. It can also be an ant, but usually... Oh no, well... Ants usually don't fly, so I don't, I don't forget that. But anything with wings is a fly and whatever. But that's... <laughs> like, insects are the most successful class, like animal class, in existence. And just saying that everything with wings is a bug, is a fly, is <laughs> kind of an insult and don't even get me started with algae like ah oh, algae <laughs> that's such a large group of things that just calling algae just algae is also uh, an insult that's a topic for another video so but anyway so here I just filmed uh, from my kind of course book I have just all arthropod families that I, I think just that 
all the families you can find in Finland and that's a really really broad overview and that's only the families and don't even get started with species like each family probably has like if not dozens maybe hundreds even of species and uh, if I knew even this much even this all broad overview of insects and, and arthropods I I would see so much more big and start looking at uh, around me and try to find all those those insects uh, and when for example if a fly flies into your house <laughs> I'd just instead of just saying that okay that's a random fly it's annoying I would try to see if I can uh, determine the species and, and everything and like I, I would just see so much more than just bugs general bugs everything is just a bug or a fly or whatever or an ant and uh, like one also one example of this kind of is um last time last summer i was working in a field station as kind of a research assist assistant and a friend of mine what came there to volunteer for a week and we were sorting to through a uh focus sample uh focus is this kind of algae that uh it's in english i think it's bladderwrack there's um some of it in the video you can see and uh we were just sorting through the focus and uh trying to pick out every small animal i we could find in there and at one point i I just thought that there was this small stick that fell out and I immediately knew that okay that's a caddis fly larvae because they build these smaller uh, kind of shells around them from leaves or rocks or anything like it's it's really a large group and essentially every species does a different kind of uh, shell to themselves and they're really interesting some people even use them to make jewelry what I found in YouTube and that's <laughs> kind of cool so I just saw okay that's a caddisfile library whatever so I picked it immediately and put it in a jar and my friend just looked at, at me astounded and was like I, I would s and she just said to me that she would have just said that it thought that it's a stick like a general stick but I knew that it wasn't because I knew I had seen caddisfile library before and I knew what they look like so I could essentially, I like knowledge made the difference. Knowledge made me see what it is. Uh, I I think I'm really bad at explaining, but knowledge makes you see things totally differently. And if you, for example, if you knew like um, tree species, like now I I don't really know trees that well, but if I did, I could. Like notice differences between different like places like it, close to the sea the tree biome is really different than in the city and everything and I, I would see so much more than just a tree you know but because now I just think okay a tree okay a birch okay maybe a, a pine but that's close to it And there's many. I can't just tell the difference between, and it's boring, and it's annoying. Uh, yeah, or like I, I wish I just took the time someday and just learned some general bird sounds, because birds are singing all the time, but I don't really pay attention to it. But if I knew the bird sounds, I or the songs, I. I would listen because I would know or probably know some of them and could recognize the species from the song but now because I don't I don't even listen and it's, it's a shame because birds are beautiful and they they sing so beautifully and they, it's so diverse and like you can hear a much 
greater diversity of birds than you can see because they usually hide, but since they sing, most of them sing quite often, you can hear and then you will know, uh, okay, that's a species that you essentially never see, but I, I could hear it, so I know it's here. <sighs> yeah, uh, I'm sorry, this is a really long, long, long ramble. <laughs> Yeah, anyway, um, maybe I'm just, you know, blinder than average to be this amazed when every time I learn something new, but, uh, yeah, <laughs> anyway, I am, I am happy, I am amazed by the nature around me every time, I am amazed by the world around me all the time, and uh, I love learning now, because I... I, I noticed the difference between before I learned and between after learning. And I, I wish they thought taught that in school instead of just making you learn 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 things. But also what makes me sad is that there's so much to know in the world that you'll never be able to know everything or recognize every species or even all the species groups. Because you can spend all your life or your career studying just like one family and the career of my great uncle was to study sawflies <laughs> and that's only one bug family in all of bug family existence all the diversity and yeah and even <laughs> because he's like the one of the only living experts on the on sawflies he still hasn't retired entirely since <laughs> everyone is asking him for help all the time Oof. so this went to a kind of biology tangent i'm sorry <clears throat> so back to art back to drawing so yeah so anyway um even with a knowledge even without knowing what you like studying even if you haven't studied this thing before uh, looking like drawing it will make you look at it more like closer than you ever have before before like try like for example try and draw your the chair you are sitting on right now or if you are on a bed or whatever just try and draw the, draw your bed and you'll realize that you have never looked at your bed before. And also drawing things around you makes you hyper aware, as um, Aaron Blaze said in, I think it's in sketchbook video. He made, I will link it down in the description. But like, for example, going out and drawing from life drawing like a landscape or whatever makes you hyper aware you look at it really closely but you also like remember the situation when you look back at the drawing later on which is really interesting I've noticed that too like when I look back at some some drawings I've made in some situ situations like I've gone to the zoo to draw or whatever I rem remember the situation really well it also always com comes back. And that's an interesting phenomenon. And interesting and a really cool phenomenon. And yeah, so uh, <clears throat> I'm sorry for the really long video, but uh, I'm really excited about uh, all these things and I just wanted to share it. And maybe, I don't know if anyone else has noticed these kind of changes or if I am just, you know, stupid for being amazed by obvious stuff. But anyway, as my end words, I just want to say that we see what we understand. So broaden that. You can quote me at that. <laughs> and um, thank you for listening. Thank you for watching and see you later. Bye-bye.